No, all right, let's do this, if you will, ushers, if you'll come forward. I have a handout I want to give you tonight. Please don't read it now. And it's called The Historical Background of the King James Bible in the NIV. Uh, the Historical Background of the King James Bible in the NIV. And uh, it's about 10 pages long and well documented. And uh, you will enjoy reading it. Now, we're going to give it to all the adults. I, I will say this, if you're a teenager and you want a copy because you're going to read the copy, we'll give you a copy. But if you don't want a copy, please don't receive one, okay? And, uh, and these, these are, are, are for all the adults, college age and up. And if you want a copy as a teenager, you may have one if you'll read it. But if you will not read it, uh, then please do not take it, okay? And uh, that will save us a little bit of uh, uh, effort in putting those out to the right people, and I appreciate that so very, very much. And uh, I'm, uh, I prepared a series on things God does not endorse, things God does not endorse. And so tonight, we're going to talk about why God does not endorse the NIV, why God does not endorse the NIV. You say, why are you doing this? I'll tell you why I'm doing this. I believe that it is a version of the Bible that has caused more people to go in error and has caused more people to believe in wrong doctrine than any other version that's out there today. And by the way, if you'll take the background, just the background stuff that I'm giving you right here is point proof evidence of where it came from and how corrupt it really is. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the Bible tonight and I'm just going to give you a comparison and I'll show you how it attacks that which is the blood of Christ, how it attacks the deity of Christ, how it attacks the second coming of Christ, how it attacks Christ he himself. And I'm going to show you that uh, in the Bible. And that way you can see it and be able to compare. Now, I'm also doing this. Uh, our young people is going to grow up. They may stay at Parkside Baptist Church until they're old and gray. They may. But God may move them on. And they may go to another state. Uh, or they may go to another country. And uh, I, I, I tell you what. I would not join a church where the pastor uh, was so ignorant that he used the NIV as one of the versions that he uses. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. The Bible says that God's people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And uh, when you have a version that takes out so many verses and omits so many different chapters uh, and, and changes that which is, you'll see tonight, uh, and, and attacks that which is the very Son of God, uh, I wouldn't go to a church. Uh, where the pastor did not do digging enough to be able to find out the truth. To me, that shows he doesn't really care for his people. And, uh, and, and by the way, uh, I would not uh, get a Bible uh, that would have that there. I would, I would get a King James Bible and just use it and stay with the old stuff is what I would do. Now, the Bible says here in Psalm 119 and verse 89, the Bible says, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Now, what I want to do is I want to find out what word is settled in heaven, okay? And so, fellas, if you'll pass that out, we're going to do an outline tonight, and you can follow along. Now, what I've done to help you to be able uh, to compare verses, what I did on this paper that you're getting tonight, uh, you will see the King James Bible verse, and then right underneath it, you'll see the NIV verse, okay? And you'll be able to see, point blank, the difference. Now, uh, we put it in small print. I apologize. And so if, if you're somebody that has difficulty seeing, you might have to pull out your eyeglasses, though you might not want to wear them because you might think that ages you in your looks. And you might just have to be forced to put them on tonight so to be able to see the smaller print. All right. But uh, and then take it home and get the big magnifying glass out and look at it. And uh, but we want to put it all on there. That way you could see it. And by the way, I appreciate Mrs. Cavanaugh. I, I've gone. I went to the hospital twice today, my dear wife and I, uh, to be with the butlers. And so we were down there twice today. And in between that, running back and forth and staff meetings and whatnot, uh, I, I, I laid this on her. Uh, to be able to get it all typed up, had the material, but she had to retype it and reformat it and stuff like that. And I appreciate her going the extra mile and getting this done for you tonight. And so, why God does not endorse the NIV. Let me read that verse again. May I do it? Uh, Psalm 119, verse, uh, 90, or verse 89. The Bible says, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. So I want to make sure that the word that I have is the same word 
that God has settled in heaven. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16, the Bible says all scripture is given by inspiration of God. All, all, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Now, if we need all the scripture to be able to receive the benefits of that, then why have a Bible that does not have all scripture in it? It doesn't make any sense. You know, uh, when I was in Bible college back in the uh, 1980s, uh, as a young man, I noticed that all of the uh, young men were carrying King James Bibles. And, uh, and, and then I uh, had a professor to get up one day and pointed out that Westcott and Hort had given us a corrupted Greek text. And when he said that, that provoked me to start to be able to compare that which is the King James Bible with other versions. And, uh, and at the time, you know, coming from the background that I came from, uh, I had uh, uh, in my possession, I had, I did not use it at the Bible college, but I had it in my possession, uh, a new American Standard Bible. And so I, I began to search through and I found out that nearly 200 omissions, uh, in other words, there's uh, diff 200 different verses were omitted uh, from the uh, NASV. And, uh, and then I started to study other versions to find out that they took this out and they took that out. And all it did was just give me the assurance that in my King James Bible, I have the absolute authority of the Word of God in my presence. And so, but over the years, you'll see that uh, as the years have progressed, I really believe that Satan is behind the modern translations. I believe that uh, once there was great soul winning denominations, by the way, uh, and, uh, and they, they were doing a great job. But now a lot of these soul winning denominations have gone from being soul winning churches or soul winning institutions, if I may say so, to being social clubs. That's what they do. That's how they draw people. Uh, they'll have a, a sports program or they'll have some other type of club and they'll draw somebody in and that's, that's the net that they use to be able to throw on people uh, to be able to bring them in through fellowships and through different social type of uh, outreaches that they have. And, and then, of course, they have these modern translations and these modern translations uh, water down that which is the true inerrant doctrine of the Word of God. And, uh, and you'll see that many, many of the writers you'll see uh, of course, that had a part, especially as we compare the NIV tonight with the King James Bible, you'll see that many of those uh, writers, people would believe that they're going to be great, great theologians. And they believe that these, uh, these modern texts, if you would call it that, are, are simply those things that are modernistic in their English definitions and terminologies making it easy for people to be able to understand in our common tongue. But it's not true. Uh, you'll find out that most of the translations that uh, we have today has come uh, with that which is a design Greek text from the West Cotton Hort, first coming out in 1881. And you'll find out that most of these uh, type of versions that are out there are coming from that. By the way, uh, you'll see uh, that it promotes Roman Catholic doctrine. You'll see that it tries to erase, it tries to weaken, it tries to destroy the Baptist doctrine and also the Protestant doctrines. You'll see the modern versions, many times more than not, has been a tool uh, of the Roman Catholic Church to be able to uh, do away with Protestantism and to bring it back to that which is uh, where they left. The Baptists never left, but the Protestants did. They were protesters and they left. And so it's an effort to be able to bring them back in to the fold. And so what I want to do is I'm going to point out those omissions tonight. Now, somebody says, well, you know, you don't find, uh, and, and you hear this a lot when you get into Bible uh, debates, uh, they'll say this. They'll say, well, you don't find that in the Greek text. Then my question to them is, what Greek text are you looking at? You know, uh, when you say to the Greek text, are you talking about the Greek text that was produced by Westcott and Hort? Are you talking about the Nestle's text? There's 27 different editions of that. Is that what you're talking about? Or are you talking about the United Bible Society's uh, four different Greek texts that they produced? Is that what you're talking about? What, what Greek texts are you talking about? Doesn't come from the Greek text. Well, name which one you're talking about. Then we can talk about the originality of the Greek text and be able to go back to be able to prove that we do have the Word of God today. So most Christians, they think that those that are translators are sound, Bible-believing, conservative, uh, gospel preachers, if you will. And it's farthest from the truth. You know, a lot of the translators are not even believers. 
Uh, they don't even know how to share the gospel. They don't even have a testimony of receiving Christ they themselves. I believe this. I believe that a Bible translator ought to be 100% sold on that we have the inspired, preserved Word of God. I believe that a Bible translator ought to be somebody that has a clear biblical testimony of salvation that they themselves know Christ as Savior. I believe that uh, a Bible translator ought to be somebody that holds true to the Bible doctrine, believing that the Bible doctrine is the only doctrine that man ought to nest his heart upon. So the NIV refuses many things. First off, it refuses that which is the preserved, inspired Word of God. The Bible says over in Psalm 12 and in verse 6, uh, in our King James Bible, it says this, the words of the Lord are pure words as uh, silver tried in the furnace of the earth, purified seven times. It says, thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. Now in the NIV, it says this, it says, the words of the Lord are flawless words. Now there's a big difference between flawless and pure. Uh, there's a big difference if you're a diamond buyer between having a pure diamond and having that which is a flawless diamond, okay? The, and it says in the NIV, like the silver, it says refined in the furnace of clay, purified seven times. Now watch this. The Bible says, O Lord, it says, or the NIV rather says, O Lord, it says, uh, you will keep us safe and protect us from such people forever, all right? It doesn't say that it is protecting, or if you would please, preserving the Word of God. No, it changes, if you will please, from that which is the emphasis on the Word of God to the people, all right? Now think about this. You see in the Bible, uh, let me just run them through you, if I may. Over in Revelation, it should be right there on your paper, because I'm going to speed tonight. You know, normally, normally, let me tell you why I'm speeding. Normally, Normally, on a Sunday morning service, I will preach a sermon, and it would be five to seven pages long. Tonight is 20 uh, pages long, and so I'll speed through, and you follow along. Uh, Revelation chapter 22 and in verse 18, the Bible says, For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, that if any man shall add unto these things, uh, God shall uh, add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. It says, and if any man should take away the words of the uh, book of the prophecy, of, of this prophecy, God uh, shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city. And it says, and from the things which are written in this book. Now, in the NIV, it says, I warn everyone that hears these words of the prophecy of this book. And if anyone adds anything to them, that God will add to him the plagues described in this book. Now, watch very carefully, verse 19. It says, and if anyone take away the words of the uh, book of the prophecy, it says, uh, God, and watch what it says, will take away his share in the tree of life. So it changes the, the book of life to the tree of life. Now, can I tell you, uh, there's a big difference between a tree and a book. Amen. You don't have to be very smart to figure that out. Okay, and, and the Bible does not talk about anything being recorded in a tree. It does talk about that which is uh, those things that you have done being recorded in. That's why it says your part. It doesn't say your name. It says your part, your reward. That's what it's talking about will be taken out of the book of uh, life. And so you see that what happens here is there, there is the warning that God gives in Revelation chapter 22. Uh, be careful now, if you would, about the weakening of the Bible. Be careful about, if you will, please, a, a Bible that tries to corrupt truth or that tries to omit truth or tries to weaken truth or tries to change uh, that which is the truth. Uh, don't be somebody uh, that will take in a Bible that will not fortify that which is pure doctrine. So let's look at some pure doctrine tonight, okay? Statement number one, there's the deity of Christ is, is, is clearly attacked. The deity of Christ is clearly attacked. Notice this in 1 Timothy chapter 3 and uh, in verse 16. Uh, you'll see here, the Bible says, and without uh, controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. Uh, it says, God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit. It says, seen of angels, priest of the, unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Now, I want you to notice something. Here's what it does. Uh, the NIV changes the word God to he. Now, what is that doing? That is removing the fact that Jesus is God. Now, you do not want to use a version of the Bible that removes the fact that Jesus is God. NIV says, it says, uh, behold, it says, all question. Uh, the mystery of godliness is great. He appeared. Well, who is he? 
where our Bible says that it's God that appeared. Amen. Now, who is it that appeared? It was Jesus, and uh, Christ incarnate. It was God in the flesh. All right? So it takes away the very fact that God, he himself, came down, and it just replaces him with the common man of he. Well, it also changes the Son of God to the Son of Man. The Bible says uh, in John chapter 9 and verse 35, the Bible says Jesus heard uh, that they had cast uh, him out and uh, uh, would have found him. He said unto him, Dost thou believe on the Son of God? Now that's in your Bible. Uh, the NIV says this, uh, Jesus heard, it says that they had uh, thrown him out, and when he had found him, he said, uh, do, do you believe uh, in the Son of Man? So it's taking away that he's the Son of God, just makes him the mere Son of Man. It changes that which is what, and by the way, these, these are, are those that are speaking of Jesus as being the Son of God. So it's changing it into a lie. All right, uh, you'll see in Matthew chapter 9 and verse 18, Matthew chapter 20 and verse 20, uh, Mark chapter 5 and, and verse 6, where it uses the word worshiped or worshiping, it changes it to being uh, knelt down. So it removes the respect of the Savior. You can kneel down to anybody, but you're only supposed to worship one. Amen. And that's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. So it takes away the respect that we're supposed to worship him, okay? Uh, Jesus is eternal. We know that. Uh, we know that he did not have an origin like me, uh, fleshly man. And the Bible talks in Micah chapter 5 and in verse 2, the Bible talks about how uh, uh, he was, it says, uh, from of old, it says, from everlasting. In the NIV, Micah chapter 5 and in verse 2, the latter three verse, or the latter three words of that, it says from ancient times. Now there's a difference, folks, between uh, that which is everlasting and ancient times. Okay? Uh, Jesus uh, is eternal. He's in the beginning and ending. Uh, Revelation chapter 1 and in verse 8, the Bible says, I'm Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, it says, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Oh, listen to the NIV. I am Alpha uh, and Omega, uh, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who uh, is to come, the Almighty. Well, whatever happened uh, from that which is where it says uh, the beginning and the ending, just happened to leave it out. So the NIV, uh, statement number next, uh, it omits the first part of the verse here, and it leaves out, and you notice this all throughout, you're going to see that it's a direct attack on Jesus, it's a direct attack on Christ. You're going to see there's a lot of omissions when it comes to that which is using the name of Jesus or using the name of Christ. The NIV omits the first part of the verse, and it leaves out the name of Jesus, uh, who is called the Son of God. Now, by the way, listen to this, by the, de by the devils. And so the devils even know who he is, and it's recorded in your King James Bible. But in the NIV, oh, they don't want to put that uh, the devil even calls him out and knows who he is. I mean, after all, that kind of gives authority that even that which is in the spiritual world knows who he is. So they happen to leave it out. Matthew chapter 8 and verse 29, the Bible says, in our Bible, the Bible says, And behold, they cried, saying, uh, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God? In the NIV it says this, uh, What are we to do, uh, uh, what, what do you do with us? Us, it says, uh, Son of God, they shouted. They just happened to leave out Jesus, didn't they? They just happened to leave out uh, that which is uh, tying Jesus to that which is who he is, the Son of God. The IV leaves out Jesus altogether. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 20, our Bible says, it says, Then charged uh, his disciples uh, that they should go and tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. Listen to the NIV. It says, uh, Then he warned his disciples not to tell anyone that he was Christ. Well, what about the part about Jesus the Christ? You, you see, don't, don't forget who hung on the cross. Don't forget they called him Jesus. Don't forget now, if you take away from that, and by the way, uh, when, when I was coming up as a Roman Catholic man, we were always taught to call him Christ. We were never taught to call him Jesus. Now, can I tell you, he is Jesus Christ. He is Christ Jesus. He is the totality of all that God created him to be. 
All right? So uh, they, they omit Christ, and they add man in here, and it's wrong. The Bible says in John chapter 4 and verse 42, the Bible says, listen to the latter portion of the verse, the Bible says, and know that this is indeed the Christ, now watch the spelling here, the Savior of the world. Uh, now, I double dog dare you, get in, your, get in your dictionary and look up the way they spell Savior that saves uh, perhaps an animal, uh, uh, a rescuer, if you will, please, or that saves somebody that's struggling and they'll leave the you out. Uh, there's only one time that you see that it is the you in air there and that is when it's talking about the Savior of the world. But notice how the NIV uh, talks about this. John chapter 4 and verse 42, the Bible says, this man really is the Savior of the world. Uh, what's that talking about? Talking about the Savior, if you will, please, of uh, uh, saving something, uh, uh, if you will. And anybody could be that type of Savior, all right? Uh, you'll notice this. Uh, where, where, where is this uh, uh, name that God, if you would please, uh, they take it, and by the way, a lot of the New Age Bibles do this, but they'll, they'll take it completely out. John chapter 6 and verse 69, the Bible says, and we believe, and it says, and are sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. Now, by the way, this ought to make you mad enough you ever never pick up one of those NIVs, but here's what it says in John chapter 6 and verse 69. It says, we believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. Well, what about thou art the Christ? What about the Son of the living God? It's gone. Okay? The NIV omits Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 22, the Bible says, If any man, it says, uh, love the Lord Jesus Christ. All right? Uh, watch it here. In, uh, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 22, the, bio, or the NIV says, it says, if anyone does not love the Lord, it says, a curse be on him. Uh, come, O Lord. Well, what about Lord Jesus Christ? Okay? Uh, the, again, the NIV uh, omits Jesus Christ. Ephesians chapter 3 and in verse 9, where it talks about it, says, uh, listen to it now, who created, a letter portion of the verse, uh, who created all things by Jesus Christ. Now watch this, if you will. And uh, in the NIV, the Bible says, which for the ages past was kept hidden, it says, in God who created all things. What about Jesus Christ? See, all throughout, there's, a, there's an attack on Jesus Christ. Just like at Christmas time, uh, many of the liberals, they don't want you to say Merry Christmas or Christmas. No, 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 no. They'll say Xmas. They'll say all sorts of stuff, Happy Holidays or whatever, okay? And they're leaving that. It might be that they might be getting some of that in their churches. We want to be, if you would please, uh, politically correct. We don't want to offend anybody. Okay, uh, when did God cease to be wise? Look at it, 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 17. The Bible says, uh, now on to uh, God, it says, uh, King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God. Now watch it, NIV. It says, now it says, to the uh, King eternal, immortal, invisible, uh, the only God. Well, what about the only wise God? So now let's go ahead and take away the wisdom. Matter of fact, listen to this, okay? Uh, you'll find out that, there, that 70 times in the NIV it omits God. You'll find out that Jesus is omitted 15 times. Christ is omitted 25 times. Lord is omitted 16 times. Uh, God, again, uh, is, is omitted, if you will, 70 times all these put together, but God omitted 13 times. So 70 times you'll see that there is an omission of that which is the Godhead. I'm talking about Jesus. I'm talking about Christ. I'm talking about Lord. And I'm talking about God. It sounds to me like somebody does not like Jesus Christ. Sounds to me like somebody's trying to get away from who Jesus Christ really is. Now, you say, oh, Brother Wells, there's nothing wrong with that. Well, there is, because you see, again, God's people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. See? All right? So, statement number one. Here's what we see. The deity of Christ is clearly attacked. Statement number two. The virgin birth. The virgin birth. The NIV uh, removes the firstborn. Removes the firstborn. Uh, Matthew chapter 1, verse 25, the Bible says, and, uh, and, and knew her not uh, till she brought forth her firstborn son. Now watch this. The NIV, the Bible says, or the NIV says this. It says, uh, her until she gave birth to a son. Doesn't say firstborn. Now, if it's not the firstborn, then you don't have the virgin birth of Christ. It's just a son. 
Okay, the NIV changes Joseph uh, uh, to the children's father. Now, wait a minute, who's the father of Jesus Christ? God the Father, is that right? Well, listen to it. Luke chapter 2 and verse 33. The Bible says, and, and, and the King James Bible, the Bible says, when I say the Bible says, that's what I'm referring to. The Bible says, and, and Joseph and his mother marveled, it says, Joseph and his mother marveled at those things. All right, listen to it. NIV, and the child's father and mother marveled. Right, so what is it doing? It's, it's attacking the very virgin birth of Christ. Uh, the NIV changes Joseph and his mother to his parents. Well, wait a minute. Joseph and Mary was not the parents of Christ. If that be true, there is no virgin-born Christ. If that be true, there's no salvation. If that be true, he's just another man. Okay, listen to it. Uh, uh, Luke, chapter, uh, Luke chapter 2 and verse 40. Three, the Bible says in the latter portion, Joseph and his mother knew not of it. Listen to in the NIV. The Bible says the feast was over while his parents was returning home. Well, that's a lie. Yes, sir. Joseph was not that which was the father of Jesus, wasn't the father of Christ. All right, so it attacks the very virgin birth of Christ. The NIV changes the only begotten of the father to uh, one and only. By the way, uh, the only begotten of the Father is different than one and only. Uh, John chapter 1 and verse 14, the latter portion of the Bible says, and it says, and the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The NIV says this, uh, the one and only who came, it says, from the Father, full of grace and truth. Big difference. Notice the NIV uh, omits Christ. And, uh, and rather, uh, it, it's talking about, if you would please, is coming in the flesh. Now watch the importance of this. And by the way, we have to understand how significant this is in order for a person to be saved. 1 John chapter 4 and in verse 3. The Bible says, In every spirit that confesseth that, uh, watch what it says, confesseth not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. Is what? Well, the Bible says it's not of God. All right, so it says that, that every spirit that says he's not come in the flesh is not of God. Now watch the NIV. The Bible says, but every spirit does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. What about coming in the flesh? Just happens to take it out. There can be no salvation if Jesus Christ had not have come in the flesh. So it attacks the deity of Christ. It attacks the virgin birth. It attacks the uh, atonement of the death of Christ. Uh, okay, so the NIV uh, omits over half of this particular verse, listen to it, Matthew chapter uh, 37 and verse 35, uh, the Bible says, and they crucified him and parted his garment, casting lots. It says that they might, uh, watch it, be fulfilled, which is spoken of by the prophet. Now, watch, it omits half the verse. NIV says, and uh, when they had crucified him, they divided up his clothes by casting lots. Well, what about fulfilling that which is the prophet? What about fulfilling that which is the law? No mention there. NIV removes. Statement of Acts. NIV removes. And by the way, even the Catholic Bible uh, had enough sense to keep this verse in there. Uh, Mark chapter 15 and verse 28. The Bible says, uh, And the scripture was fulfilled, uh, which saith, uh, He was numbered, it says, with the transgressors. Well, the NIV just kind of don't even have the verse in there. It's completely gone. Okay, uh, they omit the striking of the face uh, that's prophesied in Isaiah chapter 50 and verse 6, where it talks about how that uh, those are smiters are going to uh, strike him, uh, and, uh, and then they're going to spit upon him. Well, uh, the, they, they omit that. All right, uh, Isaiah, t or, or Luke, Luke chapter 22 and verse 50, or, uh, 64, the Bible says, struck him on the face and asked him, saying, prophesy who is it that smote thee? Or listen to the NIV. It says, they blindfolded him and demanded, prophesy, who hit you? It changes the structure. The NIV omits the blood. This is the very serious one. Omits the blood. Uh, it questions the very deity of Christ. Omits the blood. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 14. The Bible says, in whom we have redemption through his blood. Even, it says, forgiveness of sin. Uh, listen to it now. Uh, the Bible continues, it says, who is the image of, uh, of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. Now watch what it says in the NIV. It says, in whom we have redemption. It says, the forgiveness of sins. What about the blood? 
What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What about the blood? If it's not for the blood, you and I could not be saved. Amen. And the NIV leaves that out. Uh, uh, the NIV also, it says, uh, firstborn, it says, over all creation. It doesn't say firstborn of every creature. Now watch this. Uh, it changes the resurrection of Christ. I said the deity of Christ is clearly attacked. I said the virgin birth. Uh, I said the, uh, the atoning death of Christ. And uh, next, uh, that is the resurrection of Christ. Now the, the, there's the omission, if you would please, that attacks both uh, the virgin birth and the resurrection of the Lord. And without a resurrection, you and I have no hope of eternal life. There has to be a risen Lord. Is that right? Okay, Acts chapter 2 and verse 30, the Bible said uh, he would have raised up Christ to sit, it says, on his throne. Now, wait a minute. Uh, notice what it says in the NIV. I'll just read the latter portion. The Bible says uh, he would have one place, it says, of his descendants on his throne. Well, what about raising up Christ? There is no risen Lord. There is no salvation. Okay, the NIV omits that which is of the dead. Uh, watch this. By the way, the cults will always bury Jesus and never raise him. The cults will not have a risen Lord. Okay, the new Bibles, the new Bibles that's given, if you would please, uh, out uh, that has the false doctrines in it. They will always keep Christ dead. Now watch this, uh, Acts chapter 24 and verse 15. The Bible says, shall be the resurrection of the dead, both, it says, the just and the unjust. All right, let's, uh, let's scurry down to the NIV, where it says, the resurrection both of the righteous and the wicked. Well, what about the resurrection of the dead? Okay, all right, the NIV uh, talks about this. Uh, him that liveth forever, all right? Uh, uh, by the way, Jesus said this. He said, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I'm alive, uh, it says, forevermore. Uh, and then it says, amen, all right? And it talks about he has the keys to hell and death. Is that not right? Here's what it says. Revelation chapter 5 and in verse 14, the Bible says, it says, him that liveth forever and ever. All right, NIV. Uh, it says, the elders fell down and worshipped. Worshipped what? No sense in worship of the dead Christ. Okay? So Satan tries to hide the resurrection of the Lord. He deletes it out. He takes it out. Many of the modernist cults that are out there today will give you a dead Christ. Okay? Ephesians chapter 5 and in verse 30, the Bible says, it says, of his flesh... And of his bones. Now, wait a minute. You see here that uh, Jesus Christ is seen not having a body. Okay? Well, how can you have a risen Lord that doesn't have a body? You know, he, he's seen, if you would please, without the resurrection. No, there's got to be a resurrected Lord. He is flesh. He is bone. He is body. How is it that Thomas could touch him and see? How is it that those that saw him coming out of the tomb could recognize him not at first, but after a while, if his body was not a resurrected body? But yet, the NIV leaves off the fact that his body is even a physical body. It presents it as a spirit, but not as a body. Uh, what about the ascension? I'm almost done. What about the ascension? He says, uh, uh, he says I, I, uh, that uh, I will go unto the Father. Okay, but now wait a minute. If he doesn't ascend unto the Father, there is no hope. Uh, John chapter 16, verse 16 says, because I go to the Father. Well, wait a minute. Uh, in, in the NIV, John chapter 16 and verse 16, the Bible says, and after a little while, it says, uh, you will see me. Well, where'd he go? Well, they don't know. The reason they don't know, because it's not in their Bible. Okay, uh, they leave out that he is Lord. Uh, Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. It's what the Bible says. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 47, the Bible says the first man is of the earth, earthly, and the second man, it says, is the Lord from heaven. All right, listen to it in the NIV. It says the second man from heaven. Okay, what about, isn't he the Lord? 
Why do we happen to leave the Lord out? Okay, let's finish it up here, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll call it a night. Let me give you this. I said that there's the deity of Christ, clearly attacked. The virgin birth, clearly attacked. The atonement uh, of the death of Christ, the atoning death of Christ, clearly attacked. Uh, the resurrection of Christ, clearly attacked. The ascension of Christ, clearly attacked. What about the doctrine of faith? The salvation by faith. The doctrine of salvation by faith. Now let me give it to you and I'm done. Okay, the Word of God clearly states that it is the authority of salvation. By the way, you need that to be able to be able to go to heaven and defeat the devil. Is that right? Uh, here's what it says in the King James Bible. The latter portion, I'm reading it just so that we can get through it. Uh, Luke chapter 4 and verse 4, the Bible says, By every word of God. Now what's it talking about? Well, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Listen to it in the NIV. Jesus said in the NIV, it is written, uh, Man does not live on bread alone. Well, what about by every word of God? Why do I leave the word of God out? Okay, uh, it omits repentance. And, uh, and, of course, Satan hates it when you feel Holy Ghost repentance. He hates it uh, when uh, you, if you would please, are inspired to be able to turn to God. Now, wait a minute. Watch this. Uh, Matthew chapter 9, and verse 13. In our Bible, it says, but sinners to repentance. Uh, listen to in the NIV. It says, uh, not to call the righteous, but sinners. Call them for what? Leaves out Repentance. Okay, uh, John chapter 3. You like John chapter 3, don't you? I do. It talks about the new birth, all right? And, uh, but watch how it's attacked here. Uh, John chapter 3 and verse 15. The King James Bible says that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now, when it's talking about not perishing, that's not talking about, it's talking about not perishing in hell. Okay, all right, and so uh, it's making reference to hell. In, in, the, in, in the NIV, John chapter 3 and verse 15, the Bible says that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. Doesn't say anything about perishing. It's all good. It's all good. It's all candy stripe. It's all good. Okay, uh, they remove the sonship of the believer. John chapter 1 and verse 12, you'll see uh, where it talks about sonship there. H how about John chapter 3 and verse 16? You like that one? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. How about in the NIV? For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. No, he's not, not just the one and only. He's the only begotten, only begotten. Uh, salvation uh, is not clear in the NIV. It's rather a process. It's a, it's a work salvation. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 10, the Bible says, For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation. Listen to it in the NIV. Godly sorrow, it says, brings repentance that leads to salvation. We don't just lead to salvation, folks. It, it works repentance in us. It brings us to salvation. It causes us to come to salvation. Okay, uh, you know, another shocking omission is John or Matthew ch or Mark chapter 6 and verse 11, where it teaches here that uh, uh, there's no seriousness about rejecting Christ. This is the last verses I'll read. No seriousness about rejecting Christ. Uh, the Bible says in John, uh, Mark chapter 6 and verse 11, the Bible says, And whosoever shall not receive you, it says, uh, nor hear you. It says, When you depart thence, shake off the dust under your feet. It says, for a testimony against them. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more uh, tolerable for Solomon and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Now listen to it in the NIV. It says, uh, and uh, in any place. It says, and if any place uh, will not welcome you or listen to you. It says, shake the dust off your feet when you leave as a testimony against them. Well, there's no judgment there. They took away the judgment. All it is, it's no big deal. Just shake the dust off your feet and just walk away. I mean, after all, don't get offended. But what about where it says it's going to be more tolerable for that which is Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than it is for that person that's just rejected Christ? See, they soften it all the way through. Now, I listed eight other things that are problems in the NIV, and I had all the verses listed out, and I thought, okay, they don't want to listen to me for three hours. And so, uh, but you'll see here that you'll find that in IV, that salvation is not a, it, 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 it's a matter of obeying, not believing. You'll see that, uh, uh, that uh, in salvation, you'll see uh, the story of Saul, that the NIV omits much of the important text. Read about Saul's conversion. 
And you're going to see it just take it and, re and compare, and you're going to see it changes drastically concerning his conversion. Uh, the NIV uh, doesn't think much about repentance. We've seen that mostly. Uh, the cross is also deleted in most of the corrupt texts. You'll see the doctrine of the second coming of Christ is abused throughout the NIV. You'll see that the NIV attacks the kingdom of God and the coming of Jesus reigning as the very Son of God. You'll see that in the NIV, it omits the second coming of Christ. You'll see that the doctrine of hell uh, in the NIV uh, treats uh, it as a very unimportant truth. Now, I'm going to tell you, you ought to thank God that you have a Bible that you can trust. For 400 years here in our beloved nation, this is the Bible that God has used to bring revival and revival. Uh, it's, it's the Bible that men of God stood up. And when they preached, they preached with holy utterance and great conviction fell. By the way, check it out. You have never found one revival where the Holy Ghost of God did a massive saving work under an NIV. You just won't find it. Now, can I tell you, uh, it is important that you have a Bible that contains all the truth therein. And by the way, uh, if you'll read the documentation that I gave you tonight, it traces the history of both of them. It tells you where it came from. tells you where your King James Bible came from. And, uh, you know, let people call you narrow-minded. I'd rather be narrow-minded and right than wide-minded and wrong. Amen. I would. I, I'd rather know what I believe and why I believe it and stand firm on it and say, this is the Bible. This is what God teaches me. And this is where I'm going to stand and this is where I'm going to die. Uh, rather than be somebody that's just, you know, I just don't know. Well, this is a, I listened to a fellow on the radio just the other day, fellow on the radio, he's preaching, uh, a pastor's a church and uh, uh, preaching. And he said, well, in the NIV, it says this. And then he said in the ASV, it says this. And then he said in the RSV, it said this. And in the American Standard, it says this. And I thought, dear Lord, in order for me to follow him in Scripture, if I'm a church member there, I've got to take me a stack of five Bibles just to follow along. I'm going to have to stand up and say, wait a minute, wait a minute, I'm trying to catch up. What, what, what version is that again? See, make it simple for your kids. And, and by the way, listen to me. These new fangled versions that's out there, they're the Johnny-come-ladies of the 1900s and stuff like that. You know, uh, and I've given you documentation even about versions that were before the 1611 and how we received our Bible. And you'll find it very interesting reading if I can provoke you to do it. Now, Father, bless we do pray.